Hello, I'm Atuba Judge, and I bless God for this great opportunity for bringing you God's truth today. Now, we've been talking all week about the prophecy of Jeremiah and Joel. And I began to show you from the scriptures that they were speaking the same thing. See, now sometimes when we, when we study scriptures, we don't understand these things. So we take them in isolation. But then we forget this, that it is one God who is speaking. And he is not speaking different things. See, everything God has said. Oh, this is amazing. Listen, God can speak to one billion people. And they hear differently. They understand differently. But hey, guess what? Everything God was saying is, or let me say, let me use the word again, is one. Praise God. Now, it is people that bring misunderstanding to, to, the, to the word of God because they don't understand. And I'll tell you why they don't understand. Sometimes your, your language is not matured enough to understand what God is saying at the moment and sometimes you yourself have not grown enough in understanding to figure out what God is saying then other times and that that has to do with understanding you know for example God will speak a thing and I remember God is eternal he doesn't say God does not speak because of your situation he speaks truth and that's a blessing. It's, it's an amazing thing. When God speaks, He speaks truth. That's what I told you yesterday or the day before yesterday, that God always speaks in past tense. So you hear God say, you know, oh God, oh God bless me, oh God bless me. And then God shows up and says, son, I have blessed you. And then you begin to wonder, where is the blessing? Where is God? But, but you see, when God says, I have blessed you, that's to give you an idea. This is not when he is going to start looking for how to bless you. That's why he told us in Hebrews, he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He has said. He's not about to say it today. He has already said it. Now, what does that mean? Now, you look at that situation, you see, when, when, when that word comes into someone who's in a kind of present danger, and then you remember the word of the Lord that said, he said he will never leave you. Oh, praise God. Lord, you're bringing me out of this danger. Now, oh God, you are with me. I'm coming out of this situation. And then you come out of that situation. Oh, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Now, it is just possible you use that word to interpret or you give interpretation to that word for your present situation and then you get stuck there you become limited there see but you don't realize that that is a word that lasts all eternity that you can use tomorrow you can use next next year and then then when you grow in understanding you look at that word again it means something bigger See, that's how the word of God works. So everything, you know, I love, I love this. The Lord told me this one time. You know, when he began to talk to me about the difference between the word of God and the Bible. And then the Lord begin, began to talk to me about this. I said, listen, and I've told you this before. The Bible is a compendium of testimonies of people who received the word of God, what they did with it and how they ended with it so it gives us a picture now what is the bible saying from genesis to revelation all the bible is saying is this god is alive and he has a relationship with man and that means he has a relationship with you now how do you exercise that relationship by speaking fellowship in that fellowship, there is a speaking. Now, it, the Bible lets us know that we don't serve a God that we carry um, drinks and, and food to go and give to him on a tree. You know, like some people do. You drop it on the tree and say, God, 
accept my sacrifice. Amen. And then you leave it there and go home, hoping that God will accept your sacrifice. Brothers and sisters, that is not the God that we serve. The God that we serve comes into fellowship with us. He speaks to us. We hear his voice. We understand what he wants us to do part time. Praise God. We, we speak to him. And then he responds to us. He speaks to us. We respond to him. There is a fellowship. He tells us what he wants. And we agree with him. We tell him what we want. And then he says yes to us. Praise God. Yeah. That's why you will read about Adam in the Garden of Eden. And then the Bible said the voice of God came walking in the garden, in the cool of the day. So what, what was that? God was speaking to Adam and Eve. They heard the voice of God. They fellowshiped with God. Now that's in Genesis. And guess what? We also read about Cain. After Cain killed his brother, now think about it. You know, sometimes you say, oh, God, I know the reason God is not speaking to me. He said, what's the reason? Ah, I did something wrong. So the presence of God departed from me. And since that day, God has never spoken to me. You are telling a lie. Cain killed his brother Abel. It was not Satan that spoke to him. God came to Cain and said, hey, Cain, where is your brother that is speaking? Praise God. God said, where is your brother? And then he began to, ah, you see God. Oh, oh. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You don't know the heart of God. That's why you think he's all there looking for how to crucify me. He's all there waiting for me to make a mistake. And then he'll tell me, serves you right. I told you, I told you. No, that's not God. He's out to help you. Always looking for an opportunity to help you. When God visited Adam and Eve in the garden, he came and said, where are you? Hey guys, Adam, Eve, where are you? And then he said, we heard your voice. And we hid ourselves because we were naked. And God didn't say, eh, now you know. Oh, you know you're naked now. Silly you. When I'll tell you what to do, you will know. No, no, no. God said, hey, who told you you are naked? naked. Oh, you must have done what I told you not to do. I believe at that point, if Adam had taken responsibility, if Adam had said, Lord, we messed up big time. We know you told us not to do this and we, we failed you. We are so sorry, Lord. We I, I, some, I don't know, we, we just wanted to, you know, we're, we're quite inquisitive. We just wanted to know what is in that tree. You know, that, that's what was doing us. So we, we, we failed you, Lord. What do we do about this now? I believe God would have told them what to do. He said, how do you know this? You remember Cain. Before Cain killed Abel. When Cain realized that his sacrifice was not accepted. Now you see? So even then, God showed up and said, hey, they knew before God showed up, they knew that God accepted one person's sacrifice and he did not accept the other person's sacrifice. Now, what does that tell you? It means God was real to them. He was real to them. So they knew when they were pleasing God and they knew when they were not pleasing God. Not by signs. They knew at the point of the sacrifice. And then God shows up to Cain and says, Hey, Cain, what's the matter with you? And I love the message translation. The message translation says, Cain... Why are you sulking? Eh, because you accepted my brother's sacrifice. He did not accept my own. And God didn't say, serves you. God said, hey, Cain, you know what is right to do. If you have done the right thing, your sacrifice would have been accepted. Even now. That's what God told him. Even now. Turn around and go and do what is right. Instead of Cain to do that. He, he carried offense in his heart. See, offense is such a bad thing. Offense is such a killer. If you carry offense in your heart, I'll tell you this, you will never see the mercy of God that is being made available to you. See, Now, you, you will see someone else trying to hurt you. You will see someone else planning all kinds of evil against you. You will see someone doing something to, to really, you know, affect you but what the moment you take offense in that 
you will not see the mighty hand of God that has been there all along to save you. Praise God. Yeah. You mean even when people surround me? Yes, even when people surround you to destroy you. There is a, think about Elisha. He was in that house and then his servant said, Sir, we are surrounded. What did he say? Oh, let's hold a prayer meeting. Let's speak in tongues. Let's pray now, now, now. Let's call for, no. He said, relax. Those that are with us are more than those that are with them. You see? So God is there. And he will always speak to you. And never tell me he left you. No, he didn't leave you. He didn't leave Adam and Eve. No, he didn't. You know, when God drove them out of the garden, you know why God drove them out of the garden? I'll tell you why. God realized that these people were not going to listen to him anymore. Now, what does that mean? It means from henceforth, anytime God tells them something, they will want to run it through another person. They will want to run it through the devil. Hey, Satan, um, you know, what's the other side of the issue? Now, you can't walk with God that way. The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You see? And God doesn't like unstable people. The reason is, see, when, when someone is unstable, you really don't know when to depend on the person or not. It, it's true with relationships. You know this guy, you know this guy is good. Yes. But the fact, the problem is, I don't know if, when I, if I give him the job, if he's going to do it today. I don't know that. He can tell me, he knows the job, yes. But he can tell me, you know what, as I'm leaving, you know, I'm going to do that job. It's happened several times. And then the next thing, like, ah, oh, you didn't do the job. Ah, oh, so, so sorry. Something came up and start giving you stories. You know people like that. They're unstable. You can't trust them when, when the time, I mean, when the situation is urgent. You can't trust them. You can only trust them with something that you can let go or something that has a lot of time, you know, to kill for. But you can't trust them for something that is important and that is urgent. It's the same thing with God. So, I'm saying all this to tell you. God speaking in Genesis, in Exodus, all true to revelation he is saying one thing you see because there is one god his agenda is one his 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 plan is one there are many people that carry a piece of his plan but guess what that plan is one and what is that plan by the time we all come together, every one of us fulfilling God's purpose and God's will, we are all going to realize, wow, this is one God. Praise God. You know, we, we may be arguing today, hey, God told me this. Yeah, have you heard that story of the, the, the blind, is it the, 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 not the blind man now, they, they, were, they kept people in different places and they told them to identify a big elephant, see. And they were all describing from what they can see. Oh, man, the elephant is, you know, you're describing your own part. You're not seeing the other parts. But at the end of the day, when they put down their whole description together, when they drew what they saw, and everybody drew, they brought the picture together, and they're like, oh, this is an elephant. Yeah, that's all what we've been talking since. That's all what we've been describing. We've all been describing one animal, <laughs> the elephant. So why were we arguing in the first place? See, that's how the word of the Lord is. We argue because we don't understand. We argue because we think our side is the only side. But hey, God that is speaking is one God. And what the word he's speaking is one word. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. Now I'm going to show you tomorrow. I told you yesterday, Joel said, and it shall come to pass after the word so we're going to be looking at the afterwards so we understand the sequence of the prophecy so we will know exactly when it's coming to pass and what do we do in response to that praise god this thing step out today in faith a miracle is going to happen in your life today god bless you see you tomorrow bye bye